Uh, well, when I woke up this morning, obviously nervous, excited. But I think at times like this, like prior to launch, you just got to put your faith in science and engineering. Just make sure that the calculations that myself and everybody else has made were correct. Man is a curious creature. Uh, always where there have been significant technical advances, we've learned vastly more about the universe. And it's 400 years since Galileo put his little telescope up uh, to his eye and began to realize the moon had mountains and all sorts of things. I knew I couldn't get here till round about the half past two mark and I thought well yeah I am going to be 10 or 15 minutes late but when you're looking at things which are 10 billion years old what the hell is 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> it's very exciting it's so exciting we're, we're part of history now it's great yeah it's very nerve-wracking but like, yeah really now, now it's working yeah but there are some very exciting things going on in which we in Wales are involved and today is one of them and I'm enormously proud of the efforts that all of you have done in order to get this rocket off the ground, but above all, it's the experiments on it and the way it will carry knowledge of the understanding of the distant past of the universe and therefore the future of the universe for us to be able to benefit from over the next many, many decades. I mean, um, part of the thing about launching a thing like this, it's going so far away that there's no chance of like, a Hubble repair mission, for instance. It's one and a half million kilometers away from the Earth. So you've got to get it right first time. Um, so assuming it doesn't blow up on the launch pad, which thank goodness it didn't, um, <laughs> we now have this agonizing wait, a three month period of checking that everything is still working. So far at this moment, um, we've got the first signals back from both Herschel and Planck, which is a great relief. It means that both satellites are alive, they haven't been shaken apart. Um, and from now on, things should just get better and better. So they should just continue to improve. You know, through the history of astronomy, man has uh, observed the universe with this very tiny detector that's sensitive to a very small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, and gradually, through the 20th and 21st century, we've expanded that out into X-rays, gamma rays, into the uh, r infrared radio part of the spectrum. But we haven't before looked at this particular part of the spectrum, which is detecting things at the cold of the universe. It's the last frontier. The last frontier. Pioneers. Well, you know, the funding agencies have this thing about, you know, you, you've got to say what you're going to discover with a given experiment. And of course, astronomy hasn't worked like that. They've said, oh, we need, a, we need to be able, we haven't seen anything in the ultraviolet or the X-ray or the infrared. So we need to look. We don't really know what we're going to find, but it'll be interesting. As a scientist, uh, I suppose getting a much stronger handle on star formation in all kinds of different galaxies. Uh, on a personal basis, uh, maybe understanding what dust there is in the universe a lot better, how much there really is there and where it comes from, whether a lot of it's actually made in supernova rather than stars. I'll be looking forward to that one. I think that the most important question that Planck will answer is whether our understanding of the early universe is actually right. So currently we have this idea that in the very early stages of the universe there was a thing called inflation which caused the universe to expand by uh, an enormous factor. That idea is built into the standard version of the Big Bang and we think it's right on the basis of the uh, measurements that we have so far but Planck will tell us really whether that's the right way of thinking about the universe or not. I, I think the most important thing is the quantity of coal dust that there is in the universe which tells you about the, the, about the history of star formation because those are heavy elements and so it's telling you about how the universe has created heavy elements and there might be a whole reservoir of heavy elements out there in the universe that we haven't yet detected. The origin of galaxies or the origin of elliptical galaxies because uh, we already know that there's a population of dust enshrouded objects in the early universe that people suspect might be the um, progenitors um, of nearby galaxies today. 
and Herschel will allow us to make the connect, should allow us to make the connection between this, this population in the very early universe that we're seeing billions of years in the past and, and the ellipticals today. It's extremely important to understand the whole process of uh, stellar evolution, galaxy evolution. And so if we want to do a real census of what is in the universe, and particularly a census of those things that uh, go together to form us, then we have to be able to uh, use telescopes like Herschel to be able to detect what we believe will be quite a large quantity of those heavy elements. Before, it just hasn't been possible to make a survey in the far infrared because we've not had a, an instrument that can see so much sky all in one go. So previously we had to pick some galaxies in a different way and then target them to look at the, the far infrared. And this kind of, it, it's not a fair way to do things because you may miss some if they happen to be very bright in the far infrared but not very bright in the other wavelength you chose. So to get a really fair sample of the universe you need to just go out there with an infrared telescope and just scan the sky, scan large areas of the sky so you can count what you see. And Herschel is, um, I think when me and Steve realised that the sensitivity on Herschel had been kind of upgraded in, in a calculation, they thought it would actually be better than they first predicted. We actually did a back of the envelope calculation and worked out actually this is now possible, we can do this. Missions like Planck are designed uh, within the framework of a, of, of a theoretical model. And we have a standard model of cosmology right now, uh, which you know is a working hypothesis. We think that it's, it fits, but that doesn't mean that it's absolutely right. Um, Planck will either tell us that we're on the right track or it will reveal evidence of things which can't be explained within the standard framework. And in many ways, the second of those possibilities is the most exciting one. It's always more exciting when you have a revolution and, and it turns out that what you've been thinking about so far is, turns out to be wrong. So um, I think the absolutely best thing that could, could come out of Planck would be if there was evidence that we've all been mistaken so far. Yeah, but it's not just that, it's not just actually figuring out the answers to problems that we, we know. It's, it's the fact that you know, you're trying to explore something that has never been explored before and you kind of hope that there'll be, you know, I really hope there'll be new types of objects that we detect with Herschel because it is the final, it is the last electromagnetic frontier so there is a chance we'll find something completely new. Yeah. That's, that's what makes it really exciting. We spend three months while it gets to its orbital point, one and a half million kilometres away, checking out the instrument, seeing how it's performing and making sure it can achieve its scientific goals. Once we've done that, then we should go into a science verification phase, which means essentially we'll just take lots of images, essentially examples of what we'll do in the full science programme, but make sure that it can carry out those programmes effectively and efficiently. Um, I think at that point everyone will breathe a huge sigh of relief. We're already starting to relax more now. I was very nervous this morning, my fingernails got a bit of a hammer in. Um, I spent 15 years of my life and most of my hair on this project, so... Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I, I feel a lot better now. I'm a lot, certainly more relieved. Yes. We feel passionate about dust.